The Calgary Flames have themselves a good old fashioned slide indoors moment. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's edition of Locked on Flames. I am your host, Nick Zoraris, holding it down while Jess is busy. Today, we have a lot to talk about, but first, I got to tell everybody, today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. Today, we're going to be touching on some comments that General Manager Craig Conroy made to Frank Cervelli about what the Flames might be looking like this summer, the the Daniel Vladar news, how that impacts the goaltending situation these last couple games of the regular season, and then at the end of the show, third segment, we are going to touch on what the NHL is actually actually rewarding with the current format we have in regards to the draft, the playoffs. And that's more of a that's a meta topic that the NHL probably won't ever seriously address. But let's get on into the fun part of this conversation, something I love to discuss. I am not sure who the first person in sports media to come up with this term was, but the sliding doors moment is by definition when you have two opportunities it's a binary one or the other the door opens and you go inside or the door closes and you stay outside there are a couple examples um john tavares signing with the toronto maple leafs instead of staying with the new york islanders that's a sliding doors moment for the nhl the tampa bay lightning opting to keep their core together and to keep John Cooper as their coach after they got swept by the Blue Jackets in 2019. That is a sliding doors moment. Now, to put it in the context of the Flames, two summers ago, when they opted to trade Matthew Kachuk because he said he wasn't going to sign a long-term extension, and they got older players and Jonathan Huberto and Mackenzie Weger as opposed to prospects and futures. So that's a sliding doors moment. And I bring up the idea of the sliding doors moment for the Flames Because this upcoming summer is going to be arguably the most important one of Craig Conroy's tenure as a general manager. And it seems crazy to say that about somebody who's, you know, less than a calendar year into their job. But for the most part, general managers don't get that long. You know, they get two or three coaches. He got to pick his first coach, which is an an advantageous position, as opposed to some general managers who are stuck with a coach that's already under contract and the owner doesn't want to pay them to not work. So for the purposes of this conversation, he's got his coach. He picked Huska himself. He picked Huska to be the head coach himself. So he's on the clock as far as decision making. He did... An okay job as reg- in regards to the deadline, getting values, getting futures to set up whatever the next phase of Flames hockey is. This summer is going to be the sliding doors moment because Jess and I talked about this yesterday and we talked about this on Tuesday as well. The Flames are going to have an opportunity to improve their team this upcoming summer. You know, they could opt to hold on to Jacob Markstrom and sign a couple free agents and say, last year was just an aberration. We just didn't have the right mix of guys. We can be right back in the mix right now. All we need is one or two more forwards and one good defenseman, and we can be a playoff team next year. Or they can trade Jacob Markstrom. They can continue to accumulate assets. They get closer to next year's deadline. They turn Andrew Mangiapane into more assets. They hopefully get one of the prospects that they're bullish on, somebody like maybe a Hunter Brustowicz, maybe somebody like <clears throat> maybe somebody like Daniil Marimanov can make an impact more so next season. And then the conversation changes. But this is a real sliding doors moment for the Flames organization because A lot of the reason the Flames are in this current predicament, where they're on the outside looking in of both the draft lottery and the postseason, the reason they're in this position was mismanagement. And I talk about this a lot, no matter if you read my work on my sub stack here on Lockdown Flames or any or or on Lockdown NHL with Hunter Hodes, where we did the power rankings earlier today on Thursday, wherever you consume my content, one of the things I talk about a lot is When you mismanage an organization for a period of time, 
the more mismanaged your organization is, the longer you are going to be in a difficult period, the more medicine you are going to have to take to get better. The textbook example, you look at the Pittsburgh Penguins. They made the playoffs for 17 straight seasons. They won three Stanley Cups. They've got four, if not five, future Hall of Famers that have come through that organization because you got Fleury, Crosby, Malkin, Latang, I'm iffy on, and then um, Eric Carlson. So Latang Le- might get in, he might not. But for all intents and purposes, you know, the Penguins were well run for a long time, but that has cost, you know. To prioritize the future, you have to sell, excuse me, to prioritize the present, you have to sell some of your future. The Penguins did that over and over and over again. They got three Stanley Cups. They would not, they would not change a thing. You know, the Penguins have done everything right for an extended period of time. But the longer they've gone into this window, the more and more the cracks have started to seep in where you made a bad trade here. You turned Mike Matheson into Ryan Graves, you know, little things like that, where it's not a huge drop off, but it's a drop off. And you turn, you know, that ha- the Kessel Haglin Benino line into whatever it is with Lars Eller and for last year with Jeff Carter. And they've tried so many different wingers to try to get something more out of Evgeny, out of Evgeny Malkin. Wow. I do not know why I couldn't say that. I'll just stick to Gino Malkin, but for all intents and purposes, The Flames have an opportunity to mess this up. That's why this is such a pivotal sliding doors opportunity, because there's a world where they make a really brash decision and they go out and give somebody. And I don't think they would do a Sam Bennett free agency signing based on how his tenure in Calgary ended. But somebody of that ilk that's going to command a lot of money right now and for an extended period of time when the Flames' goal should be getting younger and not signing guys whose years you are buying are in their early 30s. The Flames have to take their medicine, and we're going to talk about in the third segment why this system, as currently constituted in regards to the draft and the playoffs, is bad because it incentivizes the wrong things, but... The Flames have a real opportunity here to keep going on the path they've been on. You know, I, I, I talked about this a lot in the context of the Rangers, who are having a really good season. They went to the conference finals a couple years ago. They made the playoffs last year, lost in the first round. But when you embark on a rebuild, you need to give your young players, the guys you are prioritizing, the guys you're bringing in, whether you draft them, you trade for a restricted free agent like we talked about yesterday. When you bring those guys in, you got to give them a shot. You got to give them a shot to take the reins. To successfully rebuild means you have found young guys who are cheap, who have excess value, who are going to be on your team for an extended period of time and going to be the foundational pieces of your team. Those are the guys you need to prioritize. You know, the Connor Zaries of the world. If Oliver Chillington is healthy and wants to stay and they can work something out, you know, those are your building blocks. You look up at the rest of that forward group, you know, Huberto and Kadri, solid. They're old. Manjapani, Coleman, Backlund, old. Now... It is incumbent upon the Flames to put the Matthew Coronados, the Jacob Pel- the Jacob Peltiers, the Connor Zaries, the Martin Pospisils, you know, the guys who have flashed, who have shown you something. You need those guys to take a bigger role so that, that way you don't need to go out and get a star. I don't think any of those guys that I just mentioned has star written all over them. I don't think any of those guys is going to be the best player on a team that wins a Stanley Cup. That is why it is so imperative that the Flames take the time to get this right. The way to winning a Stanley Cup is with elite talent. The Flames do not have a single elite player other than Jacob Markstrom, and it's pretty much impossible to win a Stanley Cup in today's NHL when your best player is a goaltender. And speaking of goaltenders, we are going to talk about what the Flames goaltending situation is going to look like here down the final couple games with the news about Daniel Vladar. But first, we are going to take a quick break. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. I literally, before recording this episode, I remembered, oh yeah, 
baseball starts really soon. I popped on over to game time. I bought myself Met tickets for opening day when they're going to play the Brewers. Game time makes the process so much better. Views from every seat in the venue. You click on the ticket, it gives you an AR view of what your seat is going to look like. There are no surprise surcharges where you put the tickets in your cart, you click a couple times, and then you go over to the next tab, and then there's another $40 or $50 in there. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code LOCKED ON for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hello, everyone. Thank you for hanging out today on this Thursday edition of Locked on Flames, where we are going to keep the fun rolling talking about a hockey team that's really just playing for pride at this point. You know, Jess and I have talked a lot over the last month that these games are really just for the players at this point. You know, the the fans who are, God bless them, still buying tickets to go to the Saddle Dome to watch the Flames in person, that's love. That is pure, unconditional love who, of, of sport and wanting to support the team no matter what the situation is. It is really, uh, it is really a testament to the fan base and the people who love this team that they still draw reasonably well with as bad as the team has been the last couple of weeks. You know, these are not close games. When you get stomped out by bad teams, it's not a good feeling. But speaking of goaltending, like we teased up at the end of the first segment there, the Flames had the decision made for them. The last month, all I've wanted to see is Dustin Wolf starts. I didn't really care if Markstrom was here, he wasn't here. If Ladar was here, he wasn't here. In regards to the death I, I didn't care. Dustin Wolf, if he is going to be the starter or one of the starters in a tandem next year, he needs game reps. It doesn't matter how bad the environment in front of him is. It doesn't matter how bad the team plays in front of him. He needs to be facing NHL talent on a consistent basis. I am sure once the NHL season is over, he will go back down to the AHL. He will play in the AHL playoffs for the Wranglers. I'm sure of it. I'm 100% sure that's the Flames' plan. If the Flames do not make a conscious effort to get Wolf in as many games as possible down the stretch. I do not understand what we're doing here. The Flames have played 68 games. They have 14 games remaining. Jacob Markstrom returning from injury. He's probably going to get the bulk of those starts. You know, he's probably going to get eight, nine of them. Wolf needs to get at least six. I would like the split to be eight and six because you got to ease up Markstrom's workload. You know, he, he's been dinged up a couple times. He's missed games with injury and he is probably a trade asset and not really in your long-term plan for Vladar. It's a rough situation. You know, Jess and I were talking about this yesterday in regards to just when you get a young guy, a restricted free agent, a lot of the time it's because they haven't gotten ample opportunity. Um, You look at Daniel Vladar, he's played 75 NHL games over four seasons. He got in five games for the Bruins in that 56 game Fugazi season when they were dealing with injuries, but they traded him to the flames and he's never really gotten a huge workload, you know, 23, two years ago, 27 last year, 20 this year. That's really hard for a restricted free agent goalie to go and sell to teams. You know, the flames still own, Daniel Vladar's rights, and I believe, as I pull up Cap Friendly here, I believe he has arbitration rights as well. So he's going to argue he deserves a little bit more money. You know, no, he doesn't have arbitration. No, excuse me, I'm I'm stupid. I was thinking of Dustin Wolf. Vladar has one more year under contract. That's next year. The Flames cannot do the three goalie thing again. They can't. And Dustin Wolf has nothing left to prove at the AHL level. At this point, every game Dustin Wolf plays in the AHL is a waste. And I know that's a little bit short sighted that, you know, it's better he plays there than he sits on the bench with the big club. But the Flames are not making an effort to enough of an effort to get him in these games. They don't have an excuse anymore. You know, they don't have to account for Vladar. 
they are going to get Wolf in games down the stretch, and we're going to get a fair estimation of where he's at in his development. I need to see progress. I don't need him to win every game. I don't need him to play well in every game. I need to see him getting comfortable and learning how to deal with adversity. It's very different in the national when you get cooked by a really good player than it is when you can see a goal in the AHL. If Dustin Wolf is going to start 30 to 40 games for the Flames next year, that journey starts right now. It doesn't start in training camp. It doesn't start in the offseason with his workouts. It doesn't start in the preseason. Right now. These are valuable opportunities. The Flames should be auditioning as many different types of players as possible for this spot, especially now that your hand has been forced. With Alvador in the mix, and you only have Markstrom and Wolf, and Markstrom is coming off of an injury that has been bothering him all season, and he still played well in spite of that injury. Get Dustin Wolf games. It, it's it's frustrating as a fan to watch a player you've heard so much about that you're genuinely excited for get slow played because the Flames are not in a playoff race. If the Flames were pushing for that last playoff spot and they wanted to ride Markstrom and get into that last playoff spot, that's an entirely different conversation. Excuse me here as I take a sip of water. I am quite thirsty after talking for 17 straight minutes. Thank you for bearing with me through that sip of water. But you got to find out what the guy is. It is so frustrating as a fan to not know. And that is that is the entire point of selling at the deadline. You get assets for the future, and you get to try the guys out in your own organization. You know, Dustin Wolf, I want to say, is 24. Four years old, if I remember correctly, as I pull him up. He's 22. Dustin Wolf is 22 years old. He's got 11 career NHL games. He's played 10 this season. I would have loved, loved for him to have played closer to 20 this year. I know that wasn't going to happen, especially being that the Flames kind of went on a fake surge there in February and hung around in a playoff spot. And that may or may not have been the reason they ultimately hung on to Jacob Markstrom as opposed to selling, selling. But now they know. They know Vladar doesn't need work. They know Markstrom needs to take it easy going into the offseason. Dustin Wolf, I want to know. I need to know. Because you can figure, think about it this way. I'll give you an example. You think about the Sabres right now. Right now, the Sabres are in a weird situation where Devin Levy was great at Northeastern last year. They called him up. He was good down the stretch of the regular season last year, played a handful of games. Came into the season as the presumptive starter. Did not play particularly well. Got injured. Got overworked. And then Uko Pekalukinen had a great February. Pekalukinen had the most wins of any goalie in the month of February on the Sabres, who are not an actively good team. Now the Sabres are in a position where I'm not ready to say they have a tandem like the Bruins or the Islanders or the Rangers. But they have more options than they did. That's ultimately the goal here. You want to get as much information about the guys you already have as possible. That way, you know what you need when it's time to go grocery shopping in the summer. If the Flames are serious about this sliding doors opportunity before them in the summer, and they are going to look to add players in free agency, wouldn't you like to know if you need to go out and get a goalie? Wouldn't you like to know if you think the guy you have under contract that's only 22 can be in your long-term plan? Wouldn't you like to have a goalie under contract who doesn't make a ton of money, who allows you to spend money on other positions that are a little less volatile? It's very hard to recreate goaltending in the aggregate. Ask the Leafs, ask the Hurricanes, ask the Kraken. You can be a great team at 5-on-5 in front of them but you need a certain baseline level of goalie talent if you want to get into that serious contender conversation. And coming up after the break, we are going to talk about why the current reward system of the NHL in regards to the postseason, the draft, it's bad. It rewards the wrong things. It incentivizes the wrong things. But we will be right back. Passion, drive, and patience. 
What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP. MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. I want to thank everybody who's made it to the third segment of today's show where we here at Locked On Flames got you. We got the flames. We got you covered every single day to the person the other day who commented on YouTube about the flames every day being a threat. At this point, it is kind of a threat. Like I said before, for the people who are still buying tickets to go to games, still watching every game religiously on TV, you're the salt of the earth. You are the people that make sport engaging. You are the people who you are the people who make suffering worth it. You know, sports is about the community. It is about banding together and it is about shared collective experiences. It's one of the few things that still can bring people together, even if it's only fleeting, you know, even if it's only for a couple of hours. So for the people who are still tuning in every day, greatly, greatly appreciated. And today we're going to wrap up with a conversation about the reward system. And when I talk about the reward system, I mean playoffs and the draft lottery. The biggest reward you can have in the NHL is winning the Stanley Cup. That's every team's goal eventually. The issue is the NHL has incentivized where if you're not close, you're better off being awful than you are trying. That defeatist mentality that a lot of boomers claim exists about Gen Z, that they don't try because they're scared to make a mistake, that they're scared to lose, that they don't want to be wrong. That's the NHL. You look at teams who have systematically traded away good players for pennies on the dollar, like the Sharks, the Coyotes, the Senators. You know, there are a lot of teams that have spent a lot of time being awful on purpose with no real vision of getting out of the darkness because it doesn't benefit them. You know, we were just talking in the first segment about the sliding doors opportunity that the Flames could add, look to get back in the playoffs as soon as next year doesn't benefit them. How does it benefit them to finish as the eighth or seventh seed, one of the two wild cards, and then play Vegas, play Edmonton, play Colorado, play Dallas, Winnipeg? How would it help the Flames to play win the Stanley Cup to play any of those teams in the first round next year? The Flames would be steep underdogs against any of those teams, barring something ridiculous. You know, if the Flames go out and they trade for a pending restricted free agent who's amazing, okay, then we're having a different conversation. But more likely than not, the Flames are going to be about what they are right now. Unta- under-talented, a lot of unproven guys, and guys looking to hang on. You know, it's really struggling. It's really frustrating that the NHL has incentivized you to be bad. The NHL wants teams to be like the Blackhawks, like the Sharks. And you know why? They haven't changed anything. The Blackhawks got Connor Bedard last year. The Blackhawks are going to have a good chance of getting Macklin Calabrini this year. The Rangers picked Kako second overall. They got Lafreniere the first overall the next year. The Devils, Heischer, Hughes, Hughes, Simon Nemec, you know, these teams that consistently stink pick at the top of the draft. And then when it behooves them, they start to spend money on improving their team. NHL fans should not have to put up with their team stinking for four or five straight years. Four or five very quickly becomes nine or 10. Ask the Sabres how their rebuild's going. Ask Ottawa how their rebuild's going. Ask Montreal how their rebuild is going. It is very difficult once you go down that path to start acquiring talent again. The hardest thing to get in today's NHL is superstar talent. By definition, it is very, very finite. 
that's what makes the elite of the elite so great. That upper, upper 1% of 1% of player in today's NHL, the Austin Matthews, the Connor McDavid, the Nathan McKinnons, those guys, the one out of every eight, 900, you know, every year we get closer and closer to a thousand different players playing in an NHL game during a given season. We're talking about three guys, best players in the world, undisputed, whatever order you want to put them in. Sure. It is really hard to get those guys. So teams will try for years. Look at the Red Wings. The Red Wings are exactly what the Flames do not want to be. They're going to pick. The Red Wings have picked in the top five a couple times. You know, they picked third overall the year they got Mo Sider. But they don't have a lot to show for this extended period of being a bad team. The NHL rewards that type of play. We have revenue sharing for the teams that don't turn a profit. So their owners have no incentive to improve their team. That is unfair. There are a lot of fan bases of a lot of teams that are subjugated to bad hockey for a prolonged period of time. And their owners and their franchises look at them at AT as ATMs. Well, you're a bad fan if you don't support the team through thick and thin. Why should I spend my time watching a team that's going to win 23 games all year? Why do Shark? Why would a Sharks fan go? Why would a Blackhawks fan before Bedard? Why would a Blackhawks fan go to a game last year to get their last glimpses of Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane? Come on, don't insult their intelligence. Hockey fans are very smart. Hockey fans know the what's going on. They have, they know the up and up. They understand when their team is actively trying to lose, when they are impl- massively overpaying veterans to play in the top six, when they are playing goalies who have no business playing goalie at the NHL level. The way you solve this is very straightforward. It's one of two things. Number one, every team that doesn't make the playoffs gets the exact same odds of picking first overall. You're going to get a lot less teams tearing it down to the studs if everybody has the same chance of picking first overall. And then this is where you'll get the small market owners who come in and say, well, how are we supposed to get anybody to want to come here? We play in Columbus. We play in Arizona. How are we supposed to get free agents who want to sign with us? We're not a premier destination. Improve your team. It is ridiculous that we exist in a world where the owners complain about the other owners doing their jobs better and the bad owners get rewarded. The bad owners don't put their money back into the team. When they get revenue sharing money, that goes into their pocket. When the owners get the money from expansion franchises, and we talked, Jess and I briefly touched on this the other day. I'll touch on it real quick right now if you missed it. The NHL is going to try and railroad in two more expansion franchises before the collective bargaining agreement expires in 2026 because the NHL owners are going to try and pocket all of that money. Right now, under the current CBA, the players do not get a cut of that. That is not expansion fees are not hockey related revenue. Players only get a cut of hockey related revenue. If it takes longer than 2026 to get those franchises in, the players, and they should, can say, well, we would like a cut of the expansion franchises because that is eventually going to be realized as hockey-related revenue. And then the owners are going to start getting uppity. The NHL rewards bad owners. The franchises of those bad owners are mired in perpetual mediocrity. There's a reason the NHL has the most repeat champions of the four major sports over the last 15 years. It is the only sport to have multiple franchises in three championships in that window. We are now at a point where it feels like the gap between the bottom half of the league and the top half of the league is getting bigger and bigger every day. The well-run franchises are better. The poorly run franchises are awful. You could say what you want about the Leafs teams that tried to tank for Austin Matthews. You could say a lot about the Oilers teams that tanked over the years that got the McDavid and Dreisaitl and Nugent Hopkins and Taylor Hall. Those are poorly run teams. You should not be able to pick in the top five of the draft consecutive seasons. You should reward teams that are trying to win hockey games. You don't have parity. You have a bunch of bad teams. But enough of me up on my soapbox about the owners of the NHL killing the game. That will just about do it for today's edition of Locked on Flames. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Leave the show a five-star review. If you are watching over on YouTube, hi, hello. 
please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave a comment, all that good stuff. We got you covered, Flames fans, every single day. Jess, we'll see you guys tomorrow.